This week on the Hockey Podcast, we addressed Brock Besser. So, back to the Canucks for uh, a bit here. Uh, there's been a t- couple of Twitter storms going on in Canuck land. Uh, and specifically, one happened on Friday where uh, Matt Sakaris from TSN 1040 reported that the Canucks are exploring... And I'm using that word specifically because that is the word that Matt Sakaris used. Exploring the idea of trading Brock Besser. Uh, uh, He makes $6 million and they are, I don't think, I don't know if it's fair to say that. I don't know if that's, it's, I think this is my perspective when I hear exploring. We've got, we're going into a situation with a flat cap. Uh, we are going into a situation where um, moves are going to be fast and furious in the off season. We're going to have probably the and you can listen to our podcast last week where we talked about the possible craziness of what this off season is going to look like. But it is going to go nuts. And to me, when I hear exploring, I don't hear that they're trading him. They need to look at their options at this particular point in time and. Prepare for a very quick, very speedy, and adapt to an off season. Is that from my perspective? Am I offside in expecting that, or am I missing something here? No, I don't think so. Yeah, you're right. On, you're right on on par there, there, Kev. Uh, they need to be looking at everything. They honestly need to be looking at every single legitimate option. If your name is not Pedersen. And if your name is not Quinn Hughes, and I would even throw Bo Horvat in there because he's the captain, but I would not not quite as much. I, I think they need to be looking at every option here. Um, it's um, they've 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 got they've got themselves in a big buying come this off season, and they need to figure out how to how to make a how to make it work. The use of the word exploring to me reads the same way that Kev took it. Like yeah. they got to be willing to pick up that phone call. That doesn't mean they're making a deal. That doesn't mean they're shopping them. That just means they got to answer that phone call that another GM is going to throw them a proposal for. And they got to, they got to look at how they can make this team better during this whole situation too. Right. Um, what's the one, what's the one spot that the Canucks, Canucks fans are desperate. The Canucks um, improve the blue line. Yeah. How are they going to How are they going to fix that fix slash improve that blue line without moving a big piece out? Because they are not going to have any cap room to potentially sign a, a free agent like a Tyson Berry or an Alex Pedrangelo. Yeah, the only way they get around that is if Ole Levy suddenly just bursts onto the scene and is awesome. But I mean, that's not realistic the thing about putting out the word exploring a trade possibility is a lot of people just receive that as oh they're looking to move him and then then you get the twitter shitstorm yeah and that's the that's the problem right now is everyone just saw trade and besser and then they went off and did their whole crazy oh my god they're they're doing it again they're gonna they're gonna screw this up and and everything and especially because besser is such a, a a beloved player in the in the canucks fan community because of you look at how how, like him him and Duke his dad Duke and and what they've gone through that and uh everything he's done with uh Bailey I believe um yeah uh, Bailey yeah and and everything he's just he's such a good guy and so people want want him here and I I want him here too but hockey is a business and you have to look at how you're going to create how you how you are going to improve your team even in the worst situation where you can't, don't have the cap room to do so. So exploring it doesn't mean they are actually looking at trying to trade Brock Besser. They're just looking at the options that they have and then trying to figure out what the best plan to go forward is. And as Kevin said, it's going to be a fast and furious compressed off season. You are not going to have time to sit back and relax and make, and, and think about things. You're going to have to make decisions every day. Because the thing is, gonna be like a, what a month, yep. off season. So you're gonna have the you're gonna have the draft, you're gonna have free agency, and you're gonna and then you're gonna start having to build up for, for uh, training camp. Like you, you're not gonna have that time. So doing your homework now and looking at 
exploring all the options you have available to you is smart business. And to and for fans to go off and throw hissy fits about it just shows how you're not you're not listening and you're not thinking rationally. Think rationally about this. They are not looking to trade Brock Besser. They're looking at, at, at as an option right now as a way to help things, help the team build and grow around the core players that are Pedersen and Hughes. Yeah, I mean, if they were actually actively shopping Besser because they, you know, they don't think he's performing and they're trying to clear some cap space, that would be terrible because, you know, you're not going to get a good return. He was a first round draft pick. He's a cornerstone piece of the franchise. Frankly, I think they screwed up when they moved Jared McCann. I mean, that was a first round draft pick and he's gone on to be all right uh, subsequently with Florida and, and now more so with Pittsburgh. You know, you, you can't just give those guys away. But like Chris said, you got to answer the phone if, if somebody's interested in, in making a deal. But don't, you know, like lose your minds over whether he get moves or doesn't move. What bugs me the most about this is the whole idea that there's this sky is falling situation with the salary cap. Is the salary cap situation really the difference between the Canucks winning the Stanley Cup or not? For me, it isn't a problem. Um you know, people want it both ways. They want the owner to spend, 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 you know, do every, be totally committed to uh, putting a winning product on the ice. But then they say, but you can't spend too much because of that damn cap. You can't have it both ways. Do you want to be, do you want the Ottawa situation where they don't spend the cap and the owner's deliberately cheap and they're just middling? Like, uh, this is, this thing, like, enough with this salary cap talk. Like, it's, yeah, it is a real issue. And yeah, there's been mistakes. Certainly, there's been mistakes with Benning um, and some bad contracts. We all talk about Louis Erickson all the time. There's Brandon Sutter and Jay Beagle. You can go down the list. They're all still useful pieces to what they're trying to do there and to build a win- winning team. And you just got to get past the whole salary cap thing and actually watch what's happening there. Are they improving? Are they moving forward? Are they building towards a, a championship? I think the Canucks are, but um, I don't know if it's impatience or, or or people just don't trust Jim Benning because he doesn't explain himself very well or, or what it is, but there's just this fascination with the cap that really isn't as big an issue for me as it is, I think, for some other people. Well, the thing was the thing that's fast that I think is interesting with Benning is, is he gets crapped on when he's not doing anything innovative. He gets like, "Oh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that?" And now that the idea that he's explore like he is doing what any GM, I mean, Brad Treliven probably has explored the opportunity on the offseason of trading Johnny Gaudreau. Like, and I'm not saying Gaudreau and Besser are necessarily the same player, but I I, I wouldn't... Brad Treliven is in on pretty much every single trade or is up to something. Now that Jim Ben... Now that we have a report that they are... Benning is doing some exploring, now all of a sudden the Canuck fan base says, what are you doing, Benning? But he's doing exactly what any general manager should be doing, and that is looking and planning his options. Like... I I just, I I feel like with Benning and where the Canuck fan base is right now, and I can't believe I'm going to be ranting with with Sean and Tyler as I wasn't expecting, but I I will will say this. I don't think that this Canuck management team can do anything right. I think if they win this series with Minnesota, everyone is going to be angry because they didn't get Alexis Lafreniere, even though there was only a 12.9% chance of that actually happening. If they lose, people are going to be upset in some way, shape, or form. It's just right now, it just feels to me that the Canuck Twitter fan base is more interested in being angry than actually winning and succeeding. And oh, absolutely. I mean, they, they could acquire Sidney Crosby and give up a bunch of their future, and people would lose their minds over that too, Kevin. Like, it's just, it's, it, it, they're they're trying to be something that they're not they're trying to be this cool sort of hipster sort of we know hockey better than everybody else and our strategy will will do it and it, that's it's not that's you're you are not Harmon Dial, okay Canuck fan base your name is not Harmon Dial. Harmon Dial is successful because he does Harmon Dial things better than you so cut your crap and just cheer for your team. 
know? I, I know how you feel, but Canucks Twitter is going to Canucks Twitter whether you like it or not. No, I, I, we I, need to be better. We need to be better. This is no. This is absolutely stupid. It's 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 criticizing for the sake of criticizing, and to to say that that's what they're going to do. I'm sorry. We're, we need to we need to start like acting better and stop acting like we know we everything. And, and and yelling at people when they disagree with you, man. This I, is, I mean, this, John, this, I just don't see it happening. Oh, yeah, sure. but yeah, but still fight the good fight. Don't just give up because it's oh, that's just what is going to happen. No, you can't do that. That's not how. That's that. That's defeatism. Yeah, I mean, the six of us have a a pretty you know good platform here to to push back against that, and I I, I feel like we should sometimes. And Listen. like I have I, some of them make a really good good to uh, have good takes and and make good comments and all that but a lot of it is just going after the same points a thousand times we know that the the louis erickson contract is bad we know that the the jay beagle contract is hindering what the canucks can do we know that the the brandon sutter contract is hindering what the canucks can do we get that there's a there's a line between critical thinking and just criticizing for the sake of criticizing and the Canucks He's criticizing into the void, and yeah. critis- and, the, and the Canucks fan base does crosses that line every day, to a point where it's not fun anymore. You, re- remember when you would just get go to go to the pub, go to the pub, or just get together, and you would talk about sports, and you would talk about different moves that could happen. That's not on the. That's not Canucks Twitter. It's let's let's complain about everything that's happened in the past. Instead of going, all right. So, what are the what are the options that the Canucks have this off season to try and fix their cap issues? I've seen barely any talk about that, and that's what should be talking because it's more fun. Looking forward and and figuring out what the options are is more fun. Can the Canucks find find someone find someone to take Louis Erickson on because he's got less, he's got more cap, uh, his cap hit is higher than the actual money that will be owed him in the last, next two seasons. Because I think that that's a big thing going forward is finding the teams that are going to be very cash strapped and aren't going to be able to pay aren't going to be able to um, pay up to 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 have to to have right up up against the upper upper cap and they need to find players that have are being paid like three million versus and their cap hit is five or six. That's the that's the type of moves that Jim Benny needs to needs to needs to do, and that's the type of move Ottawa, exactly Ottawa, or even I would say even Florida or something like some some teams like that where they are going to be cash strapped. Even and if you can find ways to make make that happen, and if you have to give up sweeteners, sorry Tyler for using the word sweetener. <laughs> Let's put it on the bingo card. <laughs> But do it, make it. But if you're if you're if you're a fan and all you can do is just complain about what has happened in the past, I don't know. I just I can't get behind it because it just doesn't do anything. It's not like it's not like I said. It's just there's there's a there's a line between critical thinking and rational thinking and looking at what's happened in the past, and then there's a there's a and then you've hit up and then there's the line that you cross into just yelling and criticizing for the sake of it because you want to be considered right or on the right side of his, like whatever. Like it's just, there's a time to move on and to start looking forward. And, and that's where, that's where we need to go with uh, uh, at this point. There's, it's just, it, it, it's lunacy that the, the amount of times that it's just the same three players the same three contracts that just get brought up and just yelled out, yelled at about on on Twitter. It drives me nuts. Well, and it's, you know, there are a ton of teams that are going to be in the same situation. Like, I mean, the Flames with Lucic, the Leafs with Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, and the amount of money that they're paying for players right now. Um, there's a bunch of teams that, I mean... You've got the Ocposo situation. I, I mean, there's there's a bunch of different situations that a number of teams are going to be in. The Canucks are not in that different of a situation when you look around the National Hockey League. It would be nice, of course, that they're if they were not be, but that's just 
only one. I, here, I, I have breaking news. I have a secret, and I can confirm this. Only one team is going to win the Stanley Cup this year. Not all the teams. Just one team. And there's, these teams have a 1 in 24 shot to do it. So it's, there's going to be a number of different teams in a, in a situation. And, you know, sure you want an edge, but, like, there's not a lot of teams that are in that different of a situation, really. Yeah. No, and if your GM is not do is not making those phone calls, they're not doing their job properly. Like the amount of parity that's happening right now in the NHL, you need to be on top of stuff. Like look at the Islanders. The Islanders went out and got uh, JG Pajot because they thought they had a chance to get to the playoffs. And now, now you know it's it, it's it, it, there's tons of teams out there who are in the exact same spot and that will need to shed. Salary, they'll need to, uh, and in order for them to a be under the cap and b still have you know room to play, uh, and I don't know, like the, the fact that you know Kevin mentioned it, you know, like being a least fan, you, you, you do have those top four players that are making way too much money, and that are, uh, you know, you, you, you get people mad because of what uh, what Dubis is doing. So, like, you, you know, you, you got to make those phone calls. The only difference is, is like, I, I feel that every GM is doing that or they should be doing that. And the only reason why uh, or the only reason why people are up in arms about it is because it got out to the media that uh, Bester's been uh, or it's been leaked that Bester's been in talks. So, you know, be up in arms about it. Sure. Everybody has an opinion. Keep level ahead about it. God. Follow us on podcast underscore hockey on Twitter. Like us on Facebook, the Hockey Podcast, or subscribe on iTunes or Spotify.